Oh there, everybody out there in YouTube land. This is me playing with fire outdoors. And what I am doing is I am creating 357 SIG ammunition. And I am using 40 Smith and Western brass to do it with. And this is possible because the 10 millimeter case is the parent cartridge for both of these. And um, if you use a 10 millimeter case, you're gonna have to trim up material off of it. And you're also gonna have to deal with higher pressure because the right around the the base of the brass it's thicker in a 10 millimeter cartridge with using a 40 smith and wesson like i'm doing it means it's slightly shorter than the standard a 357 sig but i'm using a shooter's box 357 sig case gauge and i'm using that every now and then to uh check the brass that comes out of this the bullets that come out of this that are fully loaded so i put i insert a fresh 40 smith and wesson case into there I go through the long stroke, and as I'm using a 550C, I got to press down slightly. That's that downward movement. Got to put the, the primer in. Once the primer's been inserted, I go and give it a turn. <clears throat> And it puts the case under the powder die. And uh, that that drops a pre-chosen pre charge into it. And I'm using 6.9 grains. I don't know if you can read that. Bullseye. I'm using Atlantan uh, Bullseye to charge these with and it's a slightly slower burning powder than what I normally use because if I use my usual powder tight group I'll blow up my gun I don't want that so I use at, at the the bullseye as it's one of the recommended powders and I'm using a 115 grain uh tmj round nose from spear and at the charge i'm using it's at the base level i want to get some familiarity because this is the first time i've really been loading this round i want to get some familiarity with what it does and how it treats it and uh and then i'll start moving the speeds and powder charge up slightly to move it into the the closer to 1400 feet per second which is where this was actually designed to be working out with a lighter round for what it actually does this is oh i've got it messed up I'll have to redo this one. But uh, that's not a problem. I don't have that happen. But it does happen. Nothing untoward. It happens on some cases. Not all of them. But it was designed for the Austrian police and military um, to do a, a specific 
that included it doing a specific job, much like the Tokarov 762x25 does. So, it moves along pretty good. It can defeat some body armor types. And uh, as I'm rotating it through, the next stage that it uh, encounters is the crimping die. And it puts a crimp on it. To ensure that the bullet doesn't have this happen to it. That went down a little bit too far. I'll have to remanufacture that one, but it's not a problem. Oh. Got the case in there. So the 357 SIG, as opposed to the 357 Magnum, is a bottleneck round. The 357 Magnum is a straight wall case and a longer case. This, this was designed so it can fit into the 40 millimeter firearm footprint without having uh, any major modifications. It's a 355 diameter bullet, which also means it's a nine mil. But it gets its strength from using a lot more charge in the brass, in a shorter brass. To get the pressures as opposed to the 357 magnum which uses a longer case to build up the speed allows the powder get the speed it, it uses a slower burning powder find some 95 grain bullets but I had no luck doing that yet so I'm using the 115s as opposed to my usual 124s or uh, I picked up a couple bags of a thousand of 147s the 357s SIG head spaces off the, the shoulder as opposed to the 357 Magnum which head spaces off the mouth of the, the round itself. There's no bullet there. 
There's no cartridge there. Because I messed up. I've got a pile of 40 Smith and Wesson brass. By a pile, I mean a pile. Um, I make like a brass goblin out at the range and commonly pick up a lot of nine and a lot of 40 Smith and Wesson rounds uh, casings. And that allows me to do a single reload on this without any real concern. Rifle brass, if I go and pick any up, I get give it a good looking over, but the, the pistol brass normally doesn't require that much of a checking. And I'll, I normally check it as I go and put it into the carry box for it. You may notice a little bulge on my, uh, on some of the bullets that I'm inserting. That's because uh, these are, I've, I've used some of these as pulls from another, from nine millimeter. And it doesn't, but it doesn't, oh. That normally doesn't create any hassle. As opposed to this failure. Having one or two fail isn't a problem. Because I'm working on a mass system. I'm doing this in a slow motion to uh, allow it to be viewed better on YouTube. I normally crank out about 200 in under half an hour, but that's without me chatting and focusing all on this. There's a nice clear shot that you can see that it's slightly it's got a crimp on it. But it still chambers nicely. These things are case gauges. They're to Sammy spec. And they fit in there completely. With no no issues. Yeah. 